All right, this is the uh, this is the oxide rack. This is it. So th this is what uh, rack scale design looks like. We've got a we've got 32 of these compute sleds here. Each of these has got an AMD Milan on there. So 7713P single socket compute sleds. Uh, and each of the, these sleds have been designed more or less from scratch by us. So we didn't take a reference design. We did our own design because we, there's some problems that we wanted to solve, some long standing problems. We wanted to get rid of the traditional BMC. We wanted to do our own service processor on there. All of these service processors on all of these sleds are all networked together. Um, and we, we've got uh, here at the center of the rack, uh, we've got our switches. So one of the big decisions we had at Oxide, uh, when we first started Oxide, is what do we do about the switch? And we know from our previous experiences that the integrating with a third-party switch, integrating with a Cisco switch or an Arista switch or a Juniper switch or the, the, the other white brand, white, white box switches out there, was going to be no end of problems. Uh, and in part because you would think, like, how complicated is it to make a switch? Well, when the switch misbehaves, everything in the rack misbehaves. So one of the, those big early decisions we had is, what do we do? And what we kind of realized that we actually had to go do is that we had to go do our own switch, which for a startup is a little bit crazy because we, we knew we wanted to go do our own compute sled. To do our own switch as well just seems absurd. But we also knew that integrating with a third-party switch was going to be no end of pain. Um, so we did it. We, we, we did our own switch. So the, 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 the switches are here. Uh, they, we call them top of rack switches, but they're very much in the middle of the rack. Uh, in here, we have the, the power shelf. So one of the many problems that we were seeking to rectify, I guess no pun intended, with traditional servers is that with a traditional server, you're plugging AC power into every single server and that those those servers have power supplies in them that are converting from ac to dc and it's a big mess um it's a lot of power cables it's really inefficient and we knew that we to do real hyperscaler class infrastructure we would want to do an actual true power shelf so all of the power conversion happens here from D, from ac to dc and then we run dc up the down the back of the rack and each of these sleds plugs into that DC bus bar. Each of the sleds also blind mates into networking. So the, the, the switches are here. Where's the cabling from the, the, the sled to the switch? That all happens in the cabled backplane. And the, the, the sleds will blind mate into that cable backplane. So if you have a sled that malfunctions, you need to be pulled out as we have here, that sled comes out, new sled comes in, Wine mates in, and you don't have to deal with any cabling whatsoever, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, a couple other things to note in the front here. We've got the, uh, the, the QSFP ports coming out the front. They go up to the patch panel and disappear into your networking. So this is the actual interface into the broader network. So all of the actual networking traffic is going to come in through these QSFP interfaces here. Uh, there's also a, a technician port that you can see here. Uh, and this is what we used to originally configure the rack. Because you may wonder, hey, I wheel this rack into my data center. It's got to have some information. How do we bootstrap the whole process? That happens through these technician ports um, where we do the initial installation of the rack. And then through there, we actually lay down all of the control plane software that's actually going to run this rack as a coherent unit. You can see we've got all the, the LEDs on the, the, the drives here. They would tell us there's a problem with the drive. We would see it with, with these service LEDs. We want to make sure the service LED tells you one thing, namely that the, when the light is on, we, we know that the, the, the drive is there, we've attached to it. Uh, they're very bright. One of those things when we originally designed it, um, you know, we, we saw the LEDs like, are these too bright? But um, we kind of like the look, honestly. I don't know what you what you think. We kind of like the, the, the landing light look here. Um, the other thing to notice about the rack, and it's a little hard because I actually have this this old commodity rack over here in my in in my right ear, absolutely screaming at me. And this thing is completely silent. I can't I can't hear this rack at all. 
Uh, and part of the reason for this is because of the geometry of these sleds. So if you look at a traditional server architecture, we're in DC, we're a, a co-location where you, lots of other racks around here. All these other racks are like this one. They're all screaming. They all have these little rack and stack one U servers. And the, the, those servers are, they're squat. And they've got these little fans in there that have to work really, really hard to push air. We've changed the geometry. We've blown it up here. It's 100 millimeters high so we can fit these 80 millimeter fans in. Turns out the efficiency of a fan is the cube of, proportional to the cube of the radius. So if you want a really efficient fan, get a big one. And these fans are really efficient and they're also really quiet. So what, and we'll see that when we go around to the, the back of the rack. Um, I don't know what else to see here. There's, there's, there's delightfully little to see here, honestly. I mean, this part of the value is that there's not a lot to see here. Um, we get these QSFPs going up to the, the fiber that's going up to the network. Should we go around to the back of the rack and check that out?